Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Thank you so much for coming in to watch this video. And I didn't do a video yesterday because I was busy, but we do have a lot to go over today. So we will go over the BTC fees that are happening right now, which are getting to being sky high again. So what does that impact on the miners? And then we'll take a look at where BTC was yesterday, today, and the miners as well, just relatively quickly here. And then we'll get into some of the viewer questions that we have seen here recently that are based on the video that I did as far as can the miners, you know, 5X, 10X going forward after the having event. Uh, into 2025 around Ju July time frame. Okay, so a couple of the questions were why is uh, Marathon basically their market cap lower than Riot? Uh, other things like that as far as what were my calculations based on my spreadsheet. So we'll go over that kind of quickly. I'll try to provide as much of the information as I can. And then the other questions that I had was obviously a lot of questions on my spreadsheet. So how is stuff calculated in that? How am I using that? Um, so we'll go over that. So it's going to be a little bit maybe longer video than normal. So I'll put the chapters down below for you guys. Uh, but yeah, we'll try to get through this as fast as we can, okay? But as always, you guys know here, this is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research, and I'm invested in finding coins and companies for full disclosure. And then uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. And uh, I think that's it. So let's get into what we have here as far as BTC fees right now. And we can see here that the fees have been increasing quite nicely here again through December, which is kind of nice. It's obviously going to be really good for the miners. So if we look at the chart here, we can see that the BTC fees right now are approximately 421 BTC on per day. That's huge. Uh, we have 144 blocks per day, roughly. That equates to about three extra BTC right now per block, roughly. Uh, it's like 2.9 something, I believe, at the moment right now. But that is obviously a lot that gets added onto it. So if the miners are getting, you know, 20 BTC per day on average, 20, whatever that is, that's going to equate to about nine to ten extra btc in uh per day for those guys all right so it all depends on what is their percentage of the network hash rate and how much they're going to be getting on that uh marathon could be obviously getting quite a bit there from it they're probably around 30 or uh, i can't even i don't even know what where they're at right now they're uh, mining a lot so i know that this is definitely helping them and all the rest of the miners as well um the big impact on this here if we look at the roughly the 14 day average which is basically looking into well we're in what are we on now? The 16th of December. So basically the 14 days in December, roughly, we are averaging approximately, where is it at? Come on, pop up. There it is. Okay. So we're averaging a day, 190 BTC. That equates to a little bit over uh, one BTC added extra per block. So that is huge, obviously, right? Uh, depending on how much hash rate that each miner has, that's going to have a huge impact on them going forward. And it should be a really good fourth quarter for a lot of these miners because we, because we've seen since basically November the transaction fees here on Bitcoin being relatively high compared to our historical averages that we've seen here other than what we saw in May which is obviously a really good month for the miners where they a lot of them had reached their like their peak production month so I expect the same thing to be happening here in the current months of De November and December as well so those figures should be really good for those miners and it's obviously going to be we're going to be adding a lot more uh, BTC fee rewards uh, revenue into my spreadsheets here. And we'll take a look at that when we actually discuss that part here. Okay. But looking at Bitcoin right now, seeing where that's at, it's at 42,197. It did have a down day yesterday. It was down approximately 2.54%. The miners were a little bit mixed here. So, some were down, some were up, but it wasn't too bad. I think we're kind of getting into this accumulation phase again in Bitcoin where we kind of saw it back here. This was back in October through pretty much November. And started at the towards the end of uh, October here, and then we had like an accumulation phase through November. We might see the same thing, even though we were going up in value, we were still accumulating here, bouncing between the thirty-eight thousand mark and thirty-four thousand seven hundred something like that. And it looks like we might be having the same thing here for a little bit longer, uh, which is fine, which is good because that way you get the weaker hands out, you get the stronger hands in, and. We'll accumulate up and then possibly blow through the 45,000 mark here towards maybe the end of the month, if not early into January sometime, especially as we get possibly closer to the SPY Bitcoin ETF approval, which is supposed to be, I think, right around January 10th, something around there. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think it's right around that date. I may not have it exactly on it, uh, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. Okay, miners, like I said, had a <clears throat> pretty mixed day here yesterday. Uh, nothing was really up too high or too low. It was pretty average on the days so far, so that was kind of good there. Okay, so that's it for that one. I think we covered this. Let's take a look at the spreadsheets that I do have here now. And uh, we do have some news also to go over. So I forgot, we do have news. Uh, 
let's go through the news here really quick. Go over that, and then we'll get into my spreadsheets. Okay. So Hive has uh, Hive Digital expands its AI growth strategy with the purchase of 96 high performance GPUs and eight GH200 super chips. And here's what we have from them. So they announced the purchase of 96 NVIDIA H100 GPUs as part of its high performance computing, HPC systems, and artificial intelligence AI strategy. These chips will operate in 12 HDX servers, each of which has eight by the H100 GPUs in it with SXM connectivity. The company will receive eight of these GPUs in uh, January 2024 and 80 of them in March. So that is nice to see that. And then here's kind of their projected potential growth uh, going forward. So 250 per quarter is what they're, they are at right now on the AI part of things. Uh, 250 is what they're kind of looking to get to relatively quickly here to per month, and then 250 per week, and then 250 per day, uh, 1,000 that is. And if they get to 250,000 per day, that's like 90 some million uh, a year in revenue from that. So that would be definitely huge if they can get to that. And obviously if there's demand for all of this as well. Okay, here's some more details. So Hive currently has 4 million of annual run rate revenue, over four times the revenue realized from its beta test. So that's good there. Hive expects to have 2,800 GPUs listed with our HPC platforms by next week. That's also good. Once these chips realize full market utilization, Hive expects to realize over 15 million of annual run rate revenue in January 2024. Um, that is definitely going to be nice, stable income potentially for them as long as they get customers using those uh, GPUs. Additionally, the company is installing an infrastructure in January for another 2,000 GPUs. Therefore, once all 4,800 of these GPUs are listed and realize full market utilization, Hive expects to reach over 25 million of annual run rate revenue in Q1 of 2024 with robust growth margins. So like I said, around, around, around 90 some million or so, 100 million per year potential. So that would obviously be good for them. And you guys can read the rest of this. I thought this was just good news here. And then lastly here, Iris Energy increased their mining capacity to 10 exahash. So they bought 1.6 exahash of miners. So here's what they reported today, announced the acquisition of 1.6 exahash of Bitmain T21 miners to increase self-mining capacity to 10 exahash. So that is great to see there as well. The 1.6 exqu ex uh, acquisition of new generation Bitmain, Bitmain to, ah, T21 miners, those are 19 joules per terahash, so those are pretty efficient. $14 per terahash purchase price, so roughly $22.3 million in all. Uh, for those, so that's really good there. They're currently at 5.6 exahash operating. They're going to be having miners shipped in the Q1, which are the 1.4 exahash of the S21 miners, along with the 1.3 exahash of the T21 miners. And then Q2, which is going to be right around the time of the halving event, they're going to get an additional 1.6 exahash of the Bitmain T21 miners as well. And then their uh, 80 megawatt expansion at Childress is on track, supporting the increase in operating hash rate from 5.6 to 10 exahash. So that's good to hear there as well. And then overall, uh, fleet efficiency is going to go from 29.5 joules per terahash to 24.8. I have them a little bit lower than that at 24.0 something, I think. So there might be just, I might be off on some numbers as far as the watts used per miner. That's one of the older machines there. And um, they're acquire, acquiring basically 8,380 of those miners uh, to get to the 1.6 additional that they need to get to 10x the hash. And if we look at my numbers here for them as well, we'll do that really quick. Here's Iris, right? Right now I have them at 10x the hash. Currently I have them at 5.7, they're saying 5.6, close enough. And the miners that are being added here are down here. And we have them pretty much marked as far as when they're supposed to come in. So, and the jewels per terahash, I, like I said, I have them a little bit lower at 24.09. So maybe some of these older miners that are 100 terahash might be like maybe 3150 watts instead of 2950, which I'm using probably the more efficient miners that are out there. Um, but we'll see. But we're still pretty close. 24, I'm happy with that right now as it is. Okay. So I think this is great news for Iris, obviously, growing into the having event, which is what kind of what we wanted to see happen anyways. All right. So that's it for that. Uh, next, the questions that we had, obviously. Uh, one of the major questions that we saw was a lot of the uh, Marathon fanboys were all up in arms about um, why am I showing that Marathon would have a lower market cap compared to Riot here on these numbers. So if you recall, I did this, I think I, this was on Thursday video, uh, and maybe I didn't speak at the time about this, but this these numbers here do not include any HODL or anything like that. HODL, I don't know where it's going to go because the miners could sell, they could HODL more. It's just up in the air. We do know what their hash rate is going to be as far as where they're going to be going forward. 
So we can kind of calculate based on that with some projections as far as where the network hash rate is going to go along with Bitcoin price, right? So we can make projections as far as hash rate revenue is concerned. HODL is a different story, like, like I said, because HODL, they could sell more, they could sell less. We It's hit or miss. You don't know. So that's going to be included in there. So if you think they're going to HODL 17,000 Bitcoin by the time, you know, these numbers are out in July of 2025, well, that's obviously going to have an impact on the market cap as well. Um, so we'll look at the both numbers for Marathon I have here in Riot, and we're going to go over it, and I'll explain as far as what I used here as well on the calculations. So here's Riot right now. Riot, based on my numbers that we did on Thursday, I had them reaching 19.5 uh, billion market cap with a future hash rate of 38.45. So if they can get to that somewhere in the next year, that's a big if there, right? That's a big if that they can get there. These have been already uh, purchased for, basically. Uh, so we know that they're going to be getting to at least that, but it might not be until late 2025, mid 2025, somewhere around there. So this is just a big guess there, okay? And then for Marathon here, we had them at roughly 15.7. And that's the reason is because they're currently at 24. There's a lot of you guys that are saying out there that Marathon has already purchased, or not purchased, but they have secured uh, miners to get to 30x hash, okay? And I'm kind of against this thought process because secured does not tell me that they're purchased. For one, they did not provide that they are, well, purchased the miners. How many did they purchase? What speed did they purchase those at? When are they getting delivered? There's all that information missing. So until I get that information, I have them at 24.64, which could be a flaw there as well because they're saying that they're at 23 point something right now. So based on the miners that I have for them, I may have some extra miners that they actually might have gotten rid of, which they didn't report at. Uh, so that could be the reason for, but based on what the report as far as buying over the last two, whatever it's been, I've been tracking for like two, two years, something, they could have removed some miners or some miners went bad. Could that be the story? Sure. could be that. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with them, but still pretty close. 24, 23, we're pretty close on the numbers here. Uh, what else? Okay. So like I said, HODL, um, HODL will have a big impact, obviously, if you believe that they're going to get to 17,000 BTC at that point. You could obviously add a lot more to it. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, the PE multiple here is at 20. Marathon last time got a lot higher multiple of PE. They got like a 35, 40, something like that, if my memory is correct. That would almost, well, if they go to 40, that would pretty much double their uh, market cap here to roughly, uh, well, let's do that. Let's go in here and we'll do it on the high side. Let me see here, 180 Marathon. Let's see here, let's go to 40 on this one. And that should update the other one as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, okay. So now we're looking at 31 billion market cap potentially, right? So like I said, my numbers are very conservative on here. I don't want to be a moon boy here going, oh, we're going to the moon, you know, um, ETC is going to the moon, miners are going to the moon, Marathon's going to get to $200 per share. I don't want to do that. I want to be more conservative as far as what are the possible expectations we could possibly see. If we get beyond that, I'm going to be a heck of a lot happier about it. And I'm sure you guys will be too. So I don't want to be saying that we're going to go to way, way, way more than what we possibly could, right? I'd rather be conservative on it, middle of the road a little bit, and then get a lot more from it than what we possibly could otherwise. All right. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And here are the way that things are being calculated. So the way I'm doing these calculations here, because some of you guys had questions on this as well, was I'm taking the Bitcoin price and then just basically adding a percentage to it each month as we go on until we hit to either 180,000 or 280,000 in this uh, spreadsheet up here. All right, so it's the same thing. And then we're also looking into uh, the rewards per day, how many blocks, uh, how many BTC they're getting per block. So I'm not even including in there any transaction fees in there as well. We're seeing a lot of transaction fees right now. So these are, like I said, very conservative numbers that this is all that they're gonna get is 3.125 after the having event. If there's transaction fees added into it, that's going to be bonus for us, for everybody here. And then I'm looking at where their hash rate is right now, growing into the having event and when they're supposed to be at their full potential, potentially. So I think Marathon here, I have them, well, right now they're at 24. Until I get, like I said, news that they bought this many miners of this type, they're getting delivered on these dates, I'll get that in, added in there, not a problem. Uh, but right now it's just, Secure does not tell me that they were purchased. Uh, Riot, we know that they're getting to 38.4 roughly, and we know that when they're going to get those potentially. Now, if those, are there going to be delays? Possible, but we're going by the time frame that we are provided, right? We're looking out a year and a half out. A lot of things can change in that time frame. Marathon could go and buy miners to get to 50 exahash by that time. Who knows? Uh, but this is just what we have information on right now.
So based on that, and then I'm taking the average number of days that they've mined in the last three to four months or so. What is their average there? And I'm using that as a potential revenue going or efficiency going forward, right? That could also change. Marathon, for whatever reason, could get to 30 you know, days uh, efficiency. Is that going to happen likely? Probably not. Uh, they do curtail quite a bit because of where they're located in Texas and other places like that. Same thing with Riot, right? I have them at 19.5 days. And the reason why then once it's all calculated here, based on the numbers here that we've seen, what the revenue could be based on the number of days that they're mining, uh, what is their hash rate at that time and all that, we're looking at the 12 months basically from July of 2025 to August of 2024 is the numbers that we're looking at the revenue. And that's how we're calculating what the potential market could be based on the P of multiple 20 if we take the 50% uh, net income from basically the full income, taking away 50% for basically for electricity, other things maybe in there as well. And then we're looking at the 75% as well. So if the mar profit margins are better than the 50, we're looking at the 75%. Obviously, we can go up in value. They should catch a higher uh, uh, profit margin on that. So I hope that it kind of explains things here, how we're doing that. And then going back down here, we're pulling in all the numbers here for all the miners, 12 month revenue running, right? 50% of that, what is that? 75% of that, what is that? And then we're using the shares. So how many shares are currently outstanding? So another thing that could happen is shares dilution. We could see that. We've seen, obviously, some miners dilute quite a bit here in the past. They could do that going into the future as well, which I'm expecting that they will. We don't know how much that's going to happen. So we'll do these kind of spreadsheets every maybe quarter or so like this, looking at once things get updated as far as number of shares, uh, what's maybe, well, how we don't take how long to account, but did they purchase any miners in that quarter? Does that impact things? And we can kind of see where things are heading towards that way. We'll also see where the network hash rate is at at that point. That has an effect on things as well, right? So there's a lot of assumptions going into this spreadsheet that may change as time progresses. And we will update this as time progresses. Right now, this is kind of the way things are looking. So don't get all bent out of shape. Uh, you know, if your miner that you're rooting for is below another miner, things can change and, you know, I'm showing you guys how things are calculated here. There is no bias here as far as which miner am I rooting for or anything like that. It's all numbers. It's all data driven. There is nothing biased about it and based on their historical performance too. So it's, you know, how many days are they mining on average over the last three, four months? Same thing with their, you know, hash rate. Where is that going? What do they purchase? It's all that included. And this is just the numbers that we're getting. So like I said, don't get bet on a shape on it. It's just what the numbers are telling me right now. Things could change in the future, like I said, okay? So I just wanted to point that out there. And let's get into the other questions that we had here is a lot of you guys are questioning how are things being calculated in the miners that I do. Basically, whenever they update anything like that or we do some metrics. So this one's going to be a little bit maybe longer section of the video here. We have a lot to go through. I do track a lot of things for each miner. And we'll try to start with the beginning as far as the settings, some of the settings that I use on this along with the minor comparisons and how those things are used. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of water here. Give me a sec. Okay, so here is an important sheet, settings. So settings is basically includes the Bitcoin price, uh, the average Bitcoin price for the month that we're tracking along with the starting hash rate for the month of uh, Bitcoin and then the ending hash rate for the month as well. And then we're using the average of that. And so we're tracking that. We're also tracking the block rewards, obviously, the 6.25 right now. Uh, we're going to get that cut in half. So it's going to be 3.125 after the hanging event. We're tracking all that. We're also kind of tracking what is the BTC percentage change? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Hash rate change as well. Is that increasing or decreasing as well from month to month? And then we're looking at the difference between hash rate uh, percentage increase and BTC price increase. So if the network hash rate increases and Bitcoin price doesn't increase more than that, we're actually seeing like a negative here. So we saw that in kind of like June of last year, right? Uh, let me see here. We had BTC uh, percent change was down 37. Hash rate was down 2.3%. Uh, so we were down 34% on that. Uh, so that basically means that the miners would be making less if they kept up with the network hash rate or if they exceeded it, so we probably made less. We're kind of checking that out, how things progress here. So especially when we see Bitcoin price going up and the network hash rate going up here, like in January of this year, the miners were still possibly up 12.3% on revenue because the BTC price increased more than the network hash rate did. So we're kind of checking that on things as well. Okay, then we're looking at the global network hash rate month over month increase. How much did that increase roughly month over month? Miners, uh, 
month over month hash rate increase. How much did the miners actually increase month over month? Did they decrease? Did they increase? Checking that. And then we're looking at the miners total hash rate, which is the combination of all the miners that we're tracking here. And then what is their percentage of the overall hash rate here in against the Bitcoin network here? Okay. And then recently we just started tracking how many months we have until the having event. So we're counting down basically on that one. Okay. So that kind of goes into all this. This up here is just used to track Bitcoin over the last 12 weeks, eight weeks, four weeks, and one week. And we're using that data from over here, which is the BTC weekly historical price. So we're checking Excuse me, so we're checking it there. We're also checking the miners here as well. So I'll update these numbers here, and then these dates get updated in, in all of the actual miners, the individual miner spreadsheets or sheets in here. That gets updated in there, and that's where we're kind of pulling the prices from. Um, I think it's Yahoo Finance or something like that that's being used for that. So we're doing that. We're also checking on the BTC daily price here in the month of December right now, which then we're getting the average price, which is down here. And then we are um, basically pointing to it up here, and then that's being used throughout all the spreadsheets as far as how much the miners could possibly generate. Going forward here, I'm then putting all the stock prices end of day for all the miners, and then that gets uh, populated into each of the individual spreadsheets up here, so that way it makes it easy. I can just do it in one spot, and then it gets all populated in there. Uh, and then this is the BTC daily price going back to the beginning of the year here. I don't think we're going too far. Yeah, I was just the average looking into it for at one point. So I don't even know what that one's being used anymore, that table there. All right. So next, looking at the Argo blockchain here as an example, we're just going to use this relatively quickly here. We'll go through it and we'll get into some of the more specific um, metrics that we use on the miners here. So shares outstanding, that's being used from their quarterly results. Um, whenever they report what they have, we're pulling that data in from there. So we're not pulling that from any other source or anything like that. We're using it from within their actual... Uh, report, which is, I'm tracking it down here. So shares outstanding. Okay. Uh, and market cap per revenue. Uh, yeah, we're just looking at the market cap and what the revenue here is. Uh, let me see here. Divided by the stock estimate. Where's that one? Okay. Combined total estimate. So we're looking at the last current quarter and the last three quarters as far as what the revenue is in the M cap divided by R. So that's that formula there. Stock price is, we're pulling that from the settings here, right? And then we're getting market cap based on the shares that we have down below, multiplying it times the stock price, and that's how we're getting the market cap on all the miners, which I think is pretty more accurate than some of the other services that are out there. Okay, then we're looking at the weekly, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and that's also being pulled down here from down over here. And this, these dates are being pulled in from the settings, right? So it makes it easy to do one spot, get it updated in, in all the sheets, and then we can pull that numbers and get it that way. Okay, current hash rate, we're pulling that from down here, which is over here, we're using the last number that we have for it. Uh, over here, what their current hash rate is and what their future hash rate is, uh, based on the future hash rate is being pulled in from over here. We're tracking basically all the miners that they have at that point. Okay, so that's future hash rate there. Hash rate left is just the difference between the two, how much they are operational right now. Hash rate growth left, so that's the difference between future hash rate and current hash rate. Number of miners, we're just tracking that, and then and we're getting the average hash rate based on the number of miners and the current hash rate they're at. They're currently at 108 tera hash per miner. Their BTC HODL is tracked from the monthly numbers that we get from them, which is tracked down here. Uh, we're including it in here as well, and then how much they could possibly have sold. That's all being tracked there. BTC value, that's using the value from the settings side of things, multiplying it times the 21 Bitcoin. That's how we're getting the value there. And looking at their HODL to market cap ratio or percentage, I just look at their market cap and what is their BTC value right now. We're getting a percentage of their market cap and uh, BTC value and how many shares are, or each share has how many pennies or dollars worth of HODL in it, okay? So that's those parts. These are obviously from the uh, monthly tracking that we do down below. All of these metrics here, or metrics, these graphs, I guess you could say, those are all being pulled in from down here. So from all of these columns, that's where we're getting all the data here. For all those, and we track it all. Uh, going back, the quarterly metrics, those are being pulled in from the actual Q numbers, right? The quarterly metrics that we do have here that we track, and we put in all the data here for all the different expenses, assets, revenue, uh, all that stuff that get, gets put in here. So we're using that data there, okay? I think that explains those two things here. The institution side of things, I'm getting those from the Weeble app, my desktop app that I use for trading as well. 
so I pull that information from there, and we keep it updated here as well, and we can see what's going on there. And then here, so the stock estimate side of things. Uh, Bitcoin current uh, monthly average price, that's coming in from the setting side of things again. Current quarter revenue is the current quarter that we're in, right? So this one hasn't been reported yet. So this includes October, November, December. So we're right now seeing that possibly uh, Argo could get about to 13.7 million in revenue. Obviously, that might increase depending on how many of the transaction fees that they get, which we've seen an increase in that. And then the last four quarters, those should be all or uh, accurate numbers or what they reported based on what they reported. Um, on those, sometimes when we're in between the quarters, I may use the previous quarter estimate number that I have for them until they actually update it, and that's kind of what we're doing there. Then we have the combined total. So then from there, we look at 50% net income from gross revenue. Um, and that is based on that some of the miners, uh, on the electricity side of things, if you look at that side, that could be anywhere between 40 and 50% on average. Uh, could be even worse than that, depending on where Bitcoin is in, in, in price and where the network hash rate is and what they're mining. But on average, it's around 40 to 50%. So that's kind of what I'm using there. And then we're looking at the PE multiple, which is down here, which I give miners grade based on what they're growing. So if they're growing nicely, I'll give them a 20, right? PE of 20 because I see that they're growing quite a bit. Somebody that's growing a little bit more than others, but not as great as others, we'll give them a 15. Somebody that's kind of growing in halfway between, we'll give them a 10. And then somebody that's really not really growing much, we'll give them a PE of 5. It's kind of the way I grade things. On that, okay. And then we look at 75% net income from gross revenue. That's what we're getting there. And then we're using also the P of five, and that's the formula there. So we're basically taking on these uh, here. We're taking the number of shares that are out there, uh, dividing it by the revenue potential at that point, and multiplying it times the P of five. Okay. So that's how those currently work out. And then we get the same thing here for the 75%. And then looking down here for future estimates. And here we're taking the last. Uh, last month. So this would have been the month of November, what the revenue was for that, multiplying it times the four months, because we're only for about four months away from the having event at 100%, and then the eight months after the having event at 50%. And this is kind of where they could be at that point in time, and then uh, looking to see what they could possibly be worth going forward. Now, this is just an estimate, right? Bitcoin price could go up much higher, or it could stay where it's at, and now we're cash recruiting much higher, and there could be actually lower than these kind of estimated price targets are at right now, okay? Uh, okay, so that kind of covers those things. So you guys know how those are being calculated. The uh, raw data obviously is being pulled in. A lot of it from the, actually the only thing that's being pulled in from, let me see, I believe this one's being from Bitcoin Monthly Production. Uh, okay, so I think this, the BTC number is being pulled in from the minor comparison sheet here, which has a lot of data as well, which is being pulled in from multiple places here, but. On that sheet we're here, we're tracking the monthly Bitcoin production for all the miners in one spot. Then we can see how they've done month over month in general, see which ones are growing, which ones are not. We can run a bunch of metrics on there. Then we're looking at the monthly hash rate here as well. We're pulling that in directly from the miner sheets for this side here. Then we can see how much of the percentage of the network they have, uh, along with the month over month difference and all of that good stuff here. So we're pulling a lot of data there. Current hash rate comparisons, so we can do some comparison comparisons from where they were 12 months ago, um, year to date, last quarter, I think something like that. We have a bunch of data that we can pull in here. And that's used in some of the metrics as well. Okay, let's go back to our go here. Okay, so that's being pulled in there. Then the BTC per X hash efficiency is being calculated by taking their current hash rate. So I use the end of the month hash rate and getting the, uh, dividing that, so we're dividing the number of BTC mined, dividing that by the number uh, hash rate that they have, times a thousand basically, to get the BTC per exahash efficiency. So they're at 51.79 here, and we, you can see how that has been coming down here over the months as the network hash rate has increased. We're seeing that decrease in that as well. Okay, so that's how those are being calculated. The value of as far as what they probably should have, um, estimated revenue, what they should have probably made is based on the average Bitcoin price for November, which is being uh, held at the settings side of things, pulled in from there for November, and then we're multiplying it times the 145 Bitcoin that they generated. That's how we're getting the revenue here. And then we can see what is the difference from month to month as far as what they mined BTC, uh, month over month hash, uh, BTC mined, yeah, month over month difference in percentage wise. BTC HODL, how much they sold, all that stuff. And then we're tracking, obviously, their hash rate currently, miners, 
a difference in miners, difference in hash rate, all that fun stuff. And then we're tracking obviously here, based on the number that we get here, the 5.3 million in revenue, right, for November. We'll go to November and we'll try and get, based on what they have reported as being installed and operational, whatever their hash rate is, we'll try to get them to the 5.3 million in revenue here and we'll run play with the numbers here until that all makes sense. And then some of the miners here that we've seen here that have had a tremendous increase in BTC uh, transaction fees, we add that separately, especially if we know that the miners are operating pretty much for the full 30 days on most parts, 31 days, right? So we'll add that down below as well. That's basically the transaction fees that they've been added to it as well. Okay, so that's that one there. I think that pretty much covers all of it for the miners here. I mean, you guys can see quarterly financials. We've done that. Um, that's basically all the numbers here. We're running some calculations on that as well. We're running some calculations up here as well, but those are pretty self-explanatory as far as what the cost of mine is. That's taken the number of Bitcoins that they mined in the quarter. And then we're just checking uh, what their cost was on that. We're excluding depreciation in that as well. That's being calculated out. Then we're looking at the debt to equity ratio. Those are just plain um, calculations on that. What else is there? General administrative, <coughs> excuse me, administrative compensation payroll. We're looking at what percentage is that, and um, along with just general administrative uh, general administrative expenses, based on the revenue, how much do they spend on that? What is that percentage of overall revenue? So, those are easy calculations there, and I think that's basic explanation there is how all the data is being used in the individual miners. If we look at some of the other ones, like here the break even. Uh, we do this quarterly just to what is their break even quarterly numbers. So we'll look at the numbers that we have for the quarter. We'll run it all through here. Uh, and then we're using the numbers from all of that stuff that I just talked about there. We'll, we're pulling everything and then we're just running calculations here. So energy cost, what was their energy cost, total current expenses. Uh, boy, I would have to probably go through all every single one of these calculations for you guys to do it. And that's going to take a long time. But I think you guys get the gist of it as how things are calculated on this. Uh, the revenue side of things, uh, let's go back to like um, Terra Wolf here. The revenue uh, per miner here. So we're tracking each miner here and we're asking how many days are mining. We're taking basically the uh, miner speed or the number of miners, how many miners do they have of that? What is their speed? Uh, how much could they actually generate based on the speed of those miners per day? Multiplying it times the number of miners times the 28 days that they were operating, and then we're getting the actual amount they could have made on those miners for the month. And then we're calculating that all down here. So that's basically what we're doing. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's really kind of out there as far as things. Um, hash rate, forward looking. I think that's it. I mean, if you guys have any specific questions out there as far as specific metrics that we run that you guys have uh, questions to, um, obviously hit me down below in the comments if you have them, or in Patreon as well. We'll get this updated uh, for today's numbers that we do have here, obviously, and the increase in Irish Energy. And yeah, but if you have anything specific, because I think if I go through every single one of these, this is going to be like a two hour video. So I don't want to make it that long, but I think you guys get the gist of it, how things are being calculated right now on all of these here. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. We'll see what happens tomorrow over the weekend. Uh, tomorrow's going to be Sunday. We'll probably look at the miners, see how they did against Bitcoin here as well. And then there's still things I'm working on. I'm trying to get the exact dollar figures for electricity costs for all the miners here. Once I have that, we'll run some numbers on it as well. And we'll probably use this in our monthly updates as well for the miners to see, did they actually, uh, well, did they mine for one thing? Did they mine what their hash rate was at the end of the month for one? And then where should they, if not, what should they have mined? And how far are they apart in other metrics as well in here? Um, this is gonna be a fun spreadsheet to go into going forward. Um, but that's still a work in progress here, all right? So I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to get too deep into it because like I said, it's going to be like a two hour video. So if you guys really do have any questions on any of the specific metrics that we go over, I'll be more than happy to put it down in the comments as far as how those calculations are being done or anything like that. And we're just going to go through it at that point. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. Um, like you see here, there's just so much metrics that I keep track of and there's 18 miners that I keep track of. So if I make a mistake someplace, please, please do let me know on that. I'm only one doing this by myself, so I can't make a mistake. I'm only human. And I appreciate you guys pointing any mistakes out that I do make, and I try to get them corrected as soon as I can. Okay, but that's about it. So thank you again for coming in to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. 
And I'll see you guys in the next one. Spreadsheet's going to be available to my Patreon members. That's still available to everybody for $5 a month. Um, if you paid a monthly or annual subscription on it, it's 10% 10, 10 less. Okay. Yeah, that's my speech. Sales pitch right there. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then.